What's up guys, I'm Nuno Silva and in this video I'm going to show you how to create an interior facing animation using D5 Render. This animation is a great way to showcase the interior of any room by bringing the objects to life one by one. We'll be taking a look at the software, how to set up the scene and how to create the animation. By the end of the video we'll be able to create stunning animations that will bring your interior designs to life. So let's get started. I have here my D5 scene and let's watch again that clip. I have here this clip already set up and as you can see the, the objects are flying over, some, some are flying over or others are simply popping out. So I'm going to teach you how to do all of this now inside the uh, D5 render and we'll do this with keyframe animation. So first thing we need to go to video. So this icon on the top, see, as a camera, video camera, you click here, you are in the video and then we need to add clips. So right now I have my clip here, so I'm going to create add, create clip here. Okay, now I have a new clip and I can adjust the camera here. So let's say I want this camera. I'm going to press F8 so I have the two point perspective. So all the vertical lines are straight. And then I'm just going to click here, add camera. Okay. And right now I'm using a 18 millimeter camera. Okay. And that now I'm simply going to press the W key to move forward just until here, I think it's fine. I'm gonna press add camera. And so right now we have this movement. So it's slowly moving forward towards the window. Okay. And here you can see that it has this six seconds. It's the duration of this clip. So what I'm going to do is increase this to 10 seconds for now. So the camera movement will be a little bit slower. Okay. So now we need to animate all of these objects and one of the ways to do it, instead of making the objects all hidden, what I like to do is define what objects are going to show up first. So in this case, it will be the this rug. And so for this rug, I will say that I want this rug to show up at, uh, let's say, first second. So I'm going to, to the right side. If you don't see this uh, right, right side bar, it's because you have it hidden. You can just simply press F11 on the keyboard see and it will show up the sidebar okay so and and on the sidebar when it's this at one second i'm going here and click add keyframe so i add one keyframe here and this is the final position of the rug so now the the, the position that i want so i want this rug to come from the sky and land here on this position so i'm gonna go here just a little bit back like so and uh, I'm gonna, here on the Z, I'm gonna make it uh, 3000. Uh, actually, 3000 and a half, probably. Yeah. And so if we do this, we can see that the rug now, it's coming from the sky and landing on the, on the ground there. So we can also do other things. For example, we can rotate just a little bit. So you give it a little bit more variation, you know, so something like this. So, and now, it's a little bit more dynamic, you see? It's kind of rotating into the final position uh, as well as moving. And now you probably are thinking, but this way I'm seeing the rug on top of all of these elements. Well, not really, because I'm doing this kind of in the opposite way. I'm defining first what will be the last position, the last keyframe. And then, as you saw, I move a little bit back and set at the starting point. So we're gonna do this to all the elements. First, we are just defining which elements are showing up first. So the next one will be the coffee table. And I like to add this type of movements. So when this when this one is it's here, it's when this coffee table will start its movement, it's the, the start position. So, but first let's define the end position as well. So I'm gonna move this to the right a little bit here. Click here. So we add the keyframe. Now I'm going to move back and now I'm going to select again the, oops, I just added the keyframe on the rug, my mistake. So just uh, click here to delete. So yeah, I need a coffee table. So on the coffee table, I'm just going to click here. And now I know that this rug was at one second. So a little bit before here, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make the coffee table just drop from the sky. Okay, 
So first drops the rug and then drops the coffee table. And I actually think that I want it at one second. So I can just drag this keyframe like, like so and make the movement a little bit slower. So if you want the this type of movement slower, you just need to increase here the timing between these two keyframes. So something like this. So now it's too slow. So this is a matter of fine tuning now, but you can see that it's quite easy to make this type of animations. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to tell you about today's sponsor, LotPixel. LotPixel is a company dedicated to making 3D scan textures and 3D models. In fact, some of the textures we are using in today's video are from LotPixel. When you visit their website, you will find a wide range of categories from textures and 3D models to choose from. If you are on the tight budget, don't worry, LotPixel has a section on their website where you can find only free textures. And to download any asset, simply click on the category you want, select the maps you need, choose the texture resolution, and then download the textures in a zip file. It's that easy. But that's not all. LotPixel also offers other assets such as decals and 3D models. You will find everything from ground gravel to volcanic rocks to household items. And here's the best part. If you use my coupon code NUNSILVA, you will get 6 credits for free. That gives you access to 6 materials or 2 3D models. And you can also use the code NUNSILVA25 to get a 25 discount off the freelance membership. So head over to LotPixel website and start creating your projects with her high quality textures and 3D models. Okay, now, so this is one type of animation. This is basically a move animation. Now, for those objects in, on top of the coffee table here, we're gonna do a different type of animation. So, let's say here and, yeah. So, uh, around here, it's when they show up. So, let's click here. And this one can be like a little bit after. With this one as well. Okay, so, now we can go back. And instead of doing the rotation and the location, we're, good, we're going to do the size. So I'm just going to make it here zero. And the same thing for this coffee cup. Zero. And the same here, zero. And so let's watch it. So you see that what happens is that they start to show up like they are popping out of the ground. See, so it's a different effect. And you can also do, if you want, let's say that uh, for uh, for the books, for example, for one of the books, let's say this one, uh, we can also go to the rotation and uh, we can rotate a little bit. So you see that it was in a different position when it started. Actually, you can even do a little bit more. Yeah, so it's rotating until it finds that position. Okay, so next, this was the last one. So around two. For this painting, we can do the add keyframe again, go a little bit back and make it uh, go above. And we can also play with the size. We can do the move and the size. So I'm going to make it zero. And let's see. So it's, you see that when it starts here, this position is still quite small until it reaches its final size and position. And then we need this one. So keyframe. This one, I think I'm going to make it from the ground. So maybe minus 300. No. Uh, we can move it like so, okay, and uh, we can make as well the size zero. And let's see. So you see on this one, I think it will be nice if um, it doesn't look like the furniture is really coming from the ground. So we can make here on this position here, we can make zero the size. And now we can see that here it will look much more natural. So just a little bit more. Yeah, so this one is fine. So let's just see how this is looking so far. 
So you see, I think this one is too fast. So maybe we can just increase a little bit this. And then we need these two. Just after it goes into the final position, this one will be the same type as the coffee and the books. So this, again, this is a lot of repetition and you can always make it more interesting with a rotation and uh, with a scale, but to be up to you. Uh, this one, so I'm going to make here and this one about here. It's always nice to offset the animations, so not everything is showing at the same time. So for example, this one, it ends here, right? So this goes to this position. And now this one, just rotate and zero. And now this little one can go here and again, rotation and zero. Yep. So you see they are kind of rotating just slightly, but it's visible. Okay. And so I think after this one, maybe we can go with a floor lamp. So this one, we can add it, let's see, here. And let's make this one a little bit more interesting. We can move it, uh, oops, it's not the scale. Let me delete this keyframe for now. Okay, add it again. So it's the location. Yeah, we can here. And let's just rotate a little bit like this and like this. But we can actually do other things like when it stops, we can add on the next keyframe, we can add a little bit rotation still uh, instead of being zero, let's say. like this too, and then goes back to zero. So you see that it kind of stops and goes back a little bit. So it's a very small detail. Yeah, but it will make a difference. And then we have the couch. So let's make it here and the couch. Let's see, maybe we can make it pop from the this wall as well. Let's see with the scale effect. Maybe it will be interesting. Let's see. Like so, okay. So we can go way like this and make it zero. Let's see. Okay. Again, here, what I'm going to do is so the final size is. 1200, so I'm going to do it uh, increase just a little bit and then it goes back to 1200. Okay, let's just have a look. Yeah, see, for this one, I, I think it was too much the scaling, so we need to reduce. Maybe 1300 is enough. Yep. So this one and okay and finally we have these two objects so i'm going to do just a scale animation here and for this one let's see okay this one can go from the top some rotation. Okay. And so let's have a look how all of this is going now. <laughs> so I think it looks pretty nice. And uh, as I mentioned, you can do all types of crazy things with this keyframe animation and this keyframe interval, it's only if you have multiple cameras here. So if I start adding more cameras, if I make it custom, then I can define for each clip, I can define the how many seconds. 
because for example let's say that i wanted this when it reaches this area i wanted to have a fast camera movement uh, to focus on the on this area for example actually i can do that so i can quickly show you if i click here and uh, let's see maybe i would like to have a camera like this and uh, what i can do is i can put here 05 but if i add another one here, uh, maybe you can leave it at uh, four. It, you see that it's automatically uh, doing all of this. So I have here 06, 05 and four seconds. So this is not what I want. I want to have custom. And now I can define here that uh, this one can be, let's say three seconds, this one 0 0.5. So the camera is really fast moving to this new position and then it will stay here for uh, four seconds. So really slow to that area and then really starts turning and stays here for extra four seconds so you can do more type of dynamic shot this is very typical you already saw probably on instagram reels and stuff like that so this type of animations as you saw this animation with d5 render is pretty amazing but there are always ways to make it even better since this video is already getting quite long i'll leave that for a future video if you like this video and found it helpful give it a thumbs up and of course don't forget to leave your comments below telling me what you think of this animation with D5 Render. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.